San Ramon Valley High. Yes, sir. <laughs> very, very dear friend of mine went to San Ramon Valley High. He was um, 6'5", about 280. And when he was a sophomore, he gave up football for ballet. Took massive shit for it. Now he's a lineman for the phone company. <clears throat> so Sophie said that she's, that she's Stella, and I'm just not buying it. Are you wearing the white diamonds tonight? Because she smells good. And um, she also describes Stella as being cranky and vengeful, and okay, you know, maybe Sophie's cranky and vengeful, but she ain't plain and road weary, all right? So, um, and if her best, best friend does so, we, well, you know, there are some advantages to living in Danville, because my best friend in Danville sold weed. <clears throat> Our next author, whose name I'm about to butcher, I asked him how to pronounce it, and he told me, and I've since forgotten. Have you seen his picture in the newspaper today? Yeah. Right there in the Chronicle? Yeah, yeah, Lee Constantone. <laughs> See how fast I burned through that? <laughs> Lee, Lee, Cons, Lee Constantino. Uh, that's good. It's close. Constantino. Uh, it's the Eno. <laughs> See, I knew there was an E in there somewhere. Lee Constantino. His first novel, Pop Apocalypse. Pop, uh, Pop Apocalypse. I don't know how this. Thanks for the IPA. <laughs> Pop Apocalypse. You know, I was reading a thing just the other day about writing fiction and how you should never make your main character named Fred because then you have this problem all the way through with Fred said, Fred said, and now I got Pop Apocalypse. Pop, but it does sound Greek. Popocopolis. Pop Apocalypse is a political satire set in the near future about the confluence of branding and Big Brother. Lee, the author, worked as a tech writer for a few years but got sick of corporate life, as we're prone to do. And he went to grad school in English at Stanford, where, rather than working on his dissertation, he wrote Pop. Acopolis. <laughs> See? Even when you try it, pop apocalypse. Which is a funny version of 1984. Okay? Now, pop apocalypse is about a 20 something. It's about a. Tw hey. It's about a 20 something playboy philanderer named Elliot R. Vanderthorpe Jr., who is heir to a multi billion dollar media fortune. Interesting point, though. There has been a video search revolution that allows anyone to search for one, anyone else's image online. So you can go and search for anyone's picture online. And this has led to, one, the use of an authoritarian national security surveillance state, and two, the turbocharging of celebrity culture. Which makes sense, right? You got everybody's images. It's all images. So it's very easy to identify anyone. So surveillance becomes trivial. And of course, surveillance, celebrities, they go hand in hand. So Elliot's father forces him to list his name on the New York Reputations Exchange. The New York Reputations Exchange is a stock market for celebrity reputations. Soon, Elliot discovers that someone is impersonating him possibly a deranged fan who is hiding in the occupied zone of Northern California. Because, of course, um, Northern California has recently been invaded by the United States. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> Especially after I start beheading medical insurance personnel. <laughs> But Elliot's problem isn't so much that he has a doppelganger, but because it's cutting into his intellectual property rights. The novel begins as Elliot's quest to discover the identity of his doppelganger, and trouble ensues. Lee Constantinou and Pop Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs>